Hey, Ronnie Jr. Mm. Um, comedy, just, I, again, I've spoke with you recently, but yes. I just want to know those early stages of like, I want to do comedy, and I believe you were sort of influenced initially because it wasn't your first first thing, but yeah. you, you end up, you know, working as a bartender, I guess, and you see comics, and then suddenly you become... The no, I, when I started doing the, when I started working at the comedy store that first night, I had already done a couple of open mics. So okay. I just kind of got into that open mic. I actually, my first show was a bringer show. It was this, this woman named Crazy Cindy. She was just this like spazzed out, curly haired, like ex drug addict woman who ran the show in the belly room. And she was like actually pretty lovely. And she would put me up and a bringer show means like, if you bring people, you can get right. up. So oftentimes like people are not as good on those shows cause they're very new and like, but it's a great way to develop, you know, if you're brand new to like be on a real show versus an open mic. And so, yeah, those belly room spots were like, are very dear to my heart because that's like, that's the room where I started. Like I remember just like feeling my heart beating out of my chest. And like, I think with stand up, it's like with any kind of form of performance, like that first time you do it, it's such a rush. It's so overwhelming. The adrenaline that you get that you always kind of, you chase that dragon like for the rest of your career, like you're yeah. trying to get to that first moment. So I'm very grateful that I got to have it there. I, I feel a bit inspired by you in a certain way because the, the the recent time that we chatted, um, we had even just like talked about like, oh, maybe if I were to ever do comedy and I was telling you how I was so nervous and, and terrified of just even the idea, not that I didn't take several improv classes, not that I haven't spent yeah. nearly 20 years doing radio and that type of thing, but. Yeah. Comedy just seems so nerve wracking. But when I talk with you, you said, wait a minute, Ronnie, it's therapeutic. Like you had said that if you're not on that stage, you kind of like people could tell people could tell you're, you've got a bit of an anxiousness about I want to be back on stage, which I think that's that's freaking awesome. Why is the stage so damn intriguing other than maybe you're always well, chasing that initial feeling? Yeah, well, I, I, I started to think about this a lot because, you know, so many people are creating like all this content from home and like on Twitter, like all day writing jokes, like trying to beat each other to like jokes. And I started to feel like, why am I doing this? Like, do I do any of this for me or is this always for other people? Like, am I doing this? Is, is this validation like even for me? And I started to kind of understand in the past few days that doing stand up for me is really about like connecting to people and feeling like making people feel comfortable and um, I hate to quote like Jim Carrey on this, but he had this documentary he just came out with. And for a long time, he would be like, why do I, why, why do people see stand up? Like, why do they go to and see stand up? Why do the people love comedy so much? And it's because they want to be free of their worries. Like they want to forget their worries. And so that's like why I love comedy. I like to like just for a split second, make people forget their worries and just like be really in the moment and connected with me. And like, I want to be feeling like we're all in it together. Like it's an orgy laughter. Yes. And, um, so I think that's what I miss. I like, I miss feeling connected to people. And I feel like that, you know, during the quarantine, you, you really get to like figure out who you want to be with and like who you want to see and like, who's really important to you. So that's been cool too. For sure. I think that comedy live is, is there's not many other experiences that are the same. I would say maybe, you know, doing, doing, you know, a show on Broadway, the, you know, live theater. I got dreams. Very similar, but I think what is so interesting about the comedy is that, oh, you said big dreams? <laughs> you, big yeah, dreams. oh, this is a time to speak everything into existence. We know that. Um, but I've always said it like this, like if you're an actor, of course you have to get down and you have to do the work and you have to, you know, make, uh, you know, a great movie and, you know, mm -hmm. partake in your role and all that stuff. But there's a, and same with music, but there are times in anything really, but there are times, Jade, where you will, be maybe not at your best as a as that performer but because you sort of already have the adulation and the name like there'll be there'll be artists and, and talent that i enjoy and i don't know it's not their best project but i'm gonna like it just because it's them you know there's a little bit of that shield but let me tell you what i've always why i've always said stand-up is so challenging is there's no shield i can rem remember in the early 2000s like going to kevin hart had a show i think it was a tuesday or wednesday yeah. And he was the host. I think Guy Tory or Joe Tory were, were the, uh, the headliners. So Kevin was not even the big guy. And I remember one particular time that we had went, because a couple of radio friends, we would go quite frequently. And then one day, as you know, from being out in Hollywood and going to these, these events, um, 
Chris Rock comes in and it's a complete surprise. Right. All shocked. And I remember feeling this, this feeling, Jade, where I said, oh my gosh, he's the guy. He's so funny. We watched so many of his movies and television. But then I said, oh, he has to perform. Regardless of the adulation we've already built internally, like he still has to rock the stage. And it was a really special moment as far as me respecting comedians because I remember he was making a lot of jokes where he's like, all right, I'm just kind of here because I'm hosting maybe the Oscars or Golden Globes. I can't recall which one it was. And then he made like little, you know, uh, innuendos about like, this ain't the Oscar uh, version. You're going to get the, you're going to get the real, you know, comedy clubs are dark and dingy sometimes. It was, it was a really cool experience. And that, from that point is why I've always been so, um, I I highly respect what you guys do because I I don't imagine it to, to be easy. Uh, by any any uh, form.